What is a phase spectrum? Well, we're going to start by looking at a sinusoidal signal and then show what the phase spectrum is and then explain why it's important. So here we have x of t sine 2 pi t. In other words, this is a 1 hertz sinusoid because omega equals 2 pi f. Omega is the radial frequency. So let's rewrite this as we can in complex exponential form. And for more information about this, check out the other videos on the channel and links are in the show notes. This sinusoid equals minus i, the complex variable, uh, times a half, times this expression. And then we've got the similar term here, but with a negative of this expression. Now we can look up standard Fourier transform tables to find the Fourier transform of this waveform. And I've written that down here. The term here is a constant. This just carries straight down. And then the Fourier transform of this time domains part of the signal of this first component, the Fourier transform of this is a 2 pi times a delta function. The delta function is located at 2 pi, a radial frequency of 2 pi. That's the 2 pi here in this complex exponential. Again, this is a standard Fourier transform. Again, you can look at the show notes to find other videos explaining this. And the same thing holds for the second term. So now let's think about plotting this. And that's where we're going to see the phase spectrum. I think most people are familiar with the amplitude spectrum or sometimes called the magnitude spectrum. And then we'll, we'll show that as well. And we'll show its relationship to this phase spectrum. So let's first of all, rewrite this uh, term out the front here. And I'll just do it in a particular way. So we can see here that this is i times the two cancels here, the half here cancels with the two, and we're going to have negative i pi. But I'm actually going to write that as zero minus i pi, just to really point out that this is a complex number. It has a zero real part, and the imaginary part is pi. Okay, and that's multiplied by delta of omega minus two pi. So I've just uh, expanded out that part of that brackets. And here we've got this complex number, which will be the half cancels with the two, the same thing. We have i times pi, this is positive i in this case. And I'm gonna write that again with the real part. So zero plus i pi. Okay, and then of course this is times delta omega plus two pi. Okay, so what have we got here? We've got two delta functions and each one is multiplied by a constant term, which is a complex number. Let's try and visualize that. Let's think of this first one first. I'm just gonna plot that here. So this is a delta function at the value omega equals two pi, the frequency, the radial frequency of two pi. So on a plot of where the x-axis is the radial frequency, we've got a delta function at the value omega equals two pi. And importantly, it's important to realize and remember that this is zero everywhere else. Sometimes I think people just focus on the delta function here, the impulse, and they forget the fact that it is actually a full function of omega. It just happens to equal zero everywhere else. Okay, so what about this one here? This one's a delta function at omega equals minus two pi. So that's over here, minus two pi, and we've got a delta function. These are plotting these two terms in the Fourier transform of our time domain signal. And again, this is zero everywhere else. So now what we have to do is we have to add these together and of course get the correct uh, amplitude and phase because if we want the amplitude spectrum, we need the magnitude of these two complex numbers. This one corresponds to this delta, this one corresponds to this delta. And if we want the phase spectrum, we just need the phase of these two things, which is maybe less familiar to people, but let's see what that is. So to do this, let's think about plotting these complex numbers to find out what their amplitudes and phases are. And so to do this, let's think about uh, our standard complex number, A plus IB. This is the Cartesian representation. And of course, in polar representation, it's the R times E to the I theta. So on a regular plot, we're used to seeing this. And if this is the, the complex number here, then this distance out here would be R 
and this angle around here is theta. The real component is A and the complex component is B. So again, just saying that to remind people of the relationship between the Cartesian and the polar. So we have ours written in Cartesian coordinates. Now we need to find our amplitude and phase spectra for all values of omega. Let's start with the negative values. Here at omega is minus two pi, radians per second, corresponds to this complex number here. So I've written that complex number over here on our complex plane. Now, where is that number? Well, it's zero real component plus pi imaginary component. So that corresponds to that value there if the distance from here, from the origin is pi. So what is the magnitude of this complex number, which will tell us the magnitude of this component at omega equals minus two pi? Well, it's the distance from the origin. So that equals pi. So now let's draw that over here on our magnitude spectrum. So I've plotted here the what is gonna be the final magnitude spectrum for our Fourier transform of our signal. And over here at minus two pi, so at minus two pi, we're gonna have a delta function where the area of that delta function is given by the magnitude of this complex number. And that magnitude equals pi. It's very important not to get confused by the different pi's. This two pi here, minus two pi, that is a frequency. This pi here is the magnitude of that component. Okay, now in the phase spectra, this is where we get to the phase spectra, at minus two pi, which corresponds of course to this number and this complex number, what phase do we have? Well, in our complex plane, the phase is the angle around from the real axis, and this angle here is 90 degrees, which corresponds to a phase in radians of pi on two. So at over here in our phase spectra, we're going to have positive pi on two for the phase that corresponds to that frequency. Now we're starting to see what this phase spectrum is telling us. Okay, now let's think about the positive omegas. There's only one positive omega that has any energy at it, and that is when omega equals two pi. So that's two pi over here and two pi over here on our amplitude spectrum and phase spectrum. This corresponds to this complex number. This complex number is zero minus i pi. And where is that on the Cartesian plane? Well, it's zero real part and negative pi imaginary part. So this is negative pi here. And again, the magnitude is given by the distance from the origin. So that distance is pi. So on our magnitude spectrum, we're going to have a delta function with an area of pi. And the phase is given by the angle around here, which is minus pi on two for this complex number. So over here on our phase spectrum, at two pi, omega equals two pi, we're gonna have minus pi on two. So this uh, phase here is negative pi on two. So here we have our phase spectrum for this signal. So hopefully this gives you insights into what the phase spectrum is. Why is it so important? Well, let's think about our signal here and think about whether this phase spectrum makes sense. Is it, intu is it intuitive to see this phase spectrum for this signal? Well, one way to view that is to realize and recall that we have another expression that links the sinusoidal wave to the cos wave. And so a sine wave can be written as cos at the same frequency, two pi t, with a phase shift of pi on two. So this, if you take the cos wave and you shift it to the right by pi on two, then you get the sine wave. So this is exactly the same. Let me, I can write this here, xt also equals this. So this is where we can see here at two pi compared to the cos wave, which has zero phase, because the cos wave would be along the real axis over here, and you can uh, confirm that for yourselves. Then compared to that, this waveform that we have, the sine wave, has negative pi on two. So the negative pi on two here matches with the phase shift that you would expect from shifting the cos wave. We can also write this, of course, let me write this uh, collecting the, t the, um, the term here for that into the t. We have two pi in brackets t minus one quarter. So this corresponds 
to a, for the one hertz waveform, this corresponds to a quarter of a second time delay. So it's a phase shift of minus pi on two, but it's a time delay of a quarter of a second. Now let's think about other frequencies. So other sinusoids at other frequencies. Let's say, for example, we had a signal at two hertz. Then what would we have? In that case, for two hertz, we would have cos of four pi here, uh, and then the t minus a quarter, we would have, if I write that just exactly the same here, just to make that point very clear, t minus a quarter, and then this would equal, for the, so in other words, for the same time shift, a wave that is twice the frequency will have a phase shift, which is now equal to pi. So the, for the, let me say that again, for the same time shift, the phase shift will be different. This waveform was at one hertz, the phase shift was pi on two. This waveform is at two hertz, the phase shift is pi. So this is where we can start to see the importance of the phase spectrum. Why is it so important? Because if for this waveform here, on this plot here, it would be occurring at four pi and negative four pi, and the phase shift would be minus pi. It would be double the phase shift. So you can see here, if you double the frequency, you would be doubling the phase shift because this would be minus pi. And from that, we can see that the phase response would be a linear response. If you halve the frequency for the same time offset of actual time, a quarter of a second, if you halve the frequency, you would halve the phase offset. It would be in here, it would be a frequency of pi, and the phase shift would be pi on four. It's a linear phase. So when we're designing things, say for example, we were designing an amplifier, then we would want our magnitude spectrum, say an audio amplifier, for example, we would want our magnitude spectrum to be fairly constant, as constant as we could do it. We can never have it exactly constant, so I'll draw it with some ripple here, but we would want our magnitude spectrum for an audio amplifier to be fairly constant across the range of frequencies, let's say up to 20 kilohertz, that's roughly human hearing. So across this range, we would want to design our circuit so that the magnitude response was fairly flat across 20 kilohertz, but we would importantly also want our phase response to be a linear phase response. Because if it was a linear phase response, it would mean that all the different frequency values would all be being delayed by the same number of seconds, the same amount of real time. They would all be having a different phase offset, which is proportion to their frequency, which is why it's linear, but the actual amount of time they would all be delayed by would be the same. And that's what you would want because in your amplifier, you want all of the different frequency components to travel through your amplifier with the same amount of delay. If they don't have the same amount of delay, the output would sound distorted because different frequency components delayed by different amounts means that the signal coming out would not be just a simply time delayed version of the signal that went in. It would be a distorted signal. So for amp uh, audio amplifiers, it's hopefully I've convinced you that you want to have a linear phase in your audio amplifier. So it's important when you design your amplifier to look at the phase spectrum. And there's many other reasons and many other applications uh, where you want to look at the phase spectrum. So hopefully this video has given you more insights into the phase spectrum. If it has, uh, like the video, it helps others to find it. Of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos. And as I said, check out the show notes where you'll find more links to other videos and a link to a web page that has a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.